The Burge Law Office specializes in RV lemon law nationwide. The following is not legal advice. For additional information, see rvlemonlaw.com. The RV Show USA. Start living the RV dream today. So you have a new RV and it's got to go back to the dealer for some warranty work. No big deal, right? Well, it's a bigger deal than most people think it is, especially if you want to do it the right way. According to our badass RV lemon lawyer, Ron Burge, if you actually do have a lemon RV, you'd best have made the warranty claim the right way. How do I set up a warranty repair? Is there a specific way or the things to do to set up a warranty claim? How do I do that? Yeah, actually there is, and it's not the way most people do it, and most people think about it. Most people who have a bad RV or they get a problem with it, they want to get it fixed, they just call up the dealer and they make an appointment. Some people will actually stop by in the hope that the dealer will take them in. Frankly, you should never do that. You should always call and make an appointment for when you're going to bring it in and tell them over the phone what all there is that's wrong with it. If they don't want to hear it, then just make the appointment. But when you go to take it in, before that, you should contact the manufacturer too. And you should also, if you didn't buy it from that particular dealer you're making the appointment with, you should contact the dealer. Now, sometimes they won't want to hear from you. and Instead, they would prefer you send an email or whatever, and that's okay. But you should never take an RV in for any kind of warranty repair without sending a letter or an email to both the selling dealer and the manufacturer of it. And then go ahead and show up on the appointed hour. But before you walk in the door of the place, make sure that what you've done is you've written out a list, an itemized numbered list of everything that you can think of that is wrong with that RV. Now you might have just one thing that is a problem, a vibration in the chassis or or the entry door that doesn't close right or it whistles in the wind when you're driving down the road or whatever. But don't just write that one item. Write down everything. So before you ever take an RV in for repair, you should do a walk around and do a walk through. Make a list of each and every single thing that's wrong. Then make a couple of copies of that list. Take the copies, one of them mail to the manufacturer, one of them mail to the selling dealer, another copy. That's what you take in with you to the dealer service department when you go in. Leave one copy at home. Make sure you also have your owner manual at home. Don't leave it in the RV. And when you go into the dealership, when you go into the dealership, then at that point, you want to give the guy the list, the service pan who's going to write up the repair order. He may say, well, I don't need that. You should say, you should just keep it and put it in your file anyway. Make them keep that because that piece of paper is your proof of what you told them. And having it in the dealer's file is just as important as having it in your own file back home. What if some things are not uh, under the RV's warranty, but they're under one of the the, uh, components of the warranty? And what if it's just service work? You know, my something needs to be adjusted. It's not really warranty work. It's service work. Can you combine service work with warranty work? Is that a good idea or keep them completely separate? You can combine them, but it's not a good idea. You should keep them completely separate. And when a repair order is written up, if you take it in for one time, for instance, and you've got some service work you want to have done and also some warranty work you want to have done, make sure they write up two repair orders, one for the service work and a separate one for the warranty work. They're not going to want to do that. They're going to want to put it all on one. The reason you want it on two separate ones is because you're paying for one, but you're not paying for the other. If you have it all on one, then what you'll find out later on, if you start arguing about the problems you've had with the factory, is that the factory is going to say, well, we don't have to count those seven days you were in the repair shop for these things, because really, three of those things that you had on your five item list, those were not really warranty anyway. And they'll start subtracting days out of service on you. The next thing you know, it's been in the shop for, say, a month and only two days of that or something the factory is willing to admit was warranty repair. And in reality, it might be a whole lot more than that. You need to be able to keep that separately, both in fact, as well as in your mind when you're talking to the factory. 
Now, keeping those repair orders separate, keeping very detailed records could very well make the difference between you being a happy camper or not. Now, this video is going to become a part of an extended playlist that's dedicated to educating RVers, including knowing the do's and don'ts when it comes to holding your manufacturer's feet to the fire, so to speak. If you believe you may have a Lemon RV, you can get a free evaluation by clicking on the link in the description below. Until next time, I'm Alan Warren, the RV Wingman. Thanks for watching.